We built this in 1984 from just a field. And you know, it's been a great, great fun time. Our kids were raised here. Um, I can't tell you how many weddings we did. The biggest weekend we did eight or nine weddings in different locations, but um, besides here. And my wife is Pat. She highly recommended I never do that again. <laughs> <laughs> is the mission statement of the Belvedere. Our family's tradition to give fine food at a fair price. Very tasty, delicious quality, fine food at a fair price. The best we can do to keep the margins there. Our recipe has been handed down three generations and our great grandmother cooked in the logging caps in Hurley. When did you, you know? start? Well, we're third generation restaurants. My uncle and aunt, I started cooking when I was 10. We got married in 76. So, and then we went and seen everyone to Marquette and then we came to Marshfield and rented the River's Edge. That's how we got started. But it's the relationships with the people. When my wife said she did not want to go anywhere else but raise her children in Marshfield, it really took me by surprise, but she knew it was a good place to be. And it, truly blessed us over the years. The people are great. We had wonderful people. Our employees were super. They were so faithful over the years. And you know, when you have that many employees, they're not just employees, but they're family. And that's when it's, the relationship is the whole deal behind it. That's, um, I know our kids grew up with us in the industry and that was very special because you really didn't have time to spend with them other than peeling potatoes, carrots, washing dishes, scrubbing floors, cleaning bathrooms. But you know, um, they don't regret it and I don't regret it one bit. I'm Linda and Dale and Patty invited me. I'm a relative of theirs. Teresa Kanapa from Marshfield. And we were invited through Dottie Schnitzler. Hey, I'm Ron Conifer. Nice day for this. Um, I'm Belle Jean Schnitzler, and um, I'm her great granddaughter. Okay. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Monica Lowe, and um, I'm with my family here today. Hi, everybody. I'm Dottie Schnitzler, live in Marshfield here, on this very special day to honor the owners, Dale and Pat Leffel, on this wonderful uh, day to do this. It's just a beautiful place to be at. I'm Steve Schnitzler. I'm really from Marshfield, live in Stevens Point, here with my grandma, my wife and kids. Hi, I'm Ken and John Schnitzler, and this is my great-grandma. Oh, I'm sitting at a table with a couple of felons over here. So <laughs> they do not want to be filmed. I just thought maybe you could edit that out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you got a lot of parking tickets, huh? Yeah, <laughs> they're unpaid of <laughs> breaching eight hundred and fifty-three dollars and sixty-two parking, cents. But parking tickets um, is um, light. Oh yeah. yeah. So I'm Nathan Zimmerman. I'm uh, originally from Marshfield. A good friend of. Dale and his family. So yeah. I'm Myron Leffel. I'm Dale's brother. Oh, and I just <laughs> the brains of the operation, I guess. Yes. <laughs> Bruce Tremelling. I'm Dale's brother-in-law. And I'm Darlene Tremelling, Dale's sister, but brains of the operation. <laughs> we want to thank you guys all for coming. This is kind of, we always do something special every year, and it varies from something like this to helping a paraplegic. Uh, two years ago, we had a paraplegic that came in, and he said his grandparents wasn't carrying him enough no more because he got too big. So we did a fundraiser, and we got his fan that his grandparents can drive because being a paraplegic, he couldn't. But he said, he's going to drive it. But, <laughs> you know, but he... 
he, he's got his van. I haven't seen him since. No, <laughs> he's doing good. He, but you know, it's fun things like that this time of year. We like to share, and this is a little special time that we thought we'd share this. And Mike here is doing a little promo to help promote the business. And things have changed. This is my 57th year in restaurants, and I swore I'd never have a computer. And I never dreamed that there would be a photographer sitting here taping me. <laughs> but, you know, let's call our presence of the Lord and say a little blessing. Thank you, Lord, for all the blessings over the years and all the blessings and grace that you keep showing down on this property and all our guests and relatives and friends that come. And, you know, Lord, thank you for all the great memories of 40-some years through these doors. Many weddings, baptisms, funerals. We're part of the community and yet when someone passes away, they want to let me know. This last week I had two calls, and I haven't seen our customers for probably three years, but the family wanted me to know that they went on. So it's a real special thing in your heart and to have served the community like mm -hmm. that. So for many years we say, thank you, Lord. We have blessed this food and the fellowship together. We hope you have a great time and a great Merry Christmas. Amen. 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 I say we don't feed them people, we feed the souls. The relationship is the whole deal behind it. It's kind of fun in the kitchen, isn't it? This is where all the action is. Okay, tell me what this is. Bacon wrap chestnuts. How long do they go for? About 15 minutes. So as the head chef, what do you bring to the Velvet here? Lots of passion for food and a lot of uh, good food and hopefully um, some more customers. <laughs> you love it. This is the pork roast for our dinner tonight. Yeah. Uh, I come from a big family of cooks. My great grandmother owned a restaurant that my grandmother worked in, and my mom, my aunts were all big cooks. So we all get together and cook big meals, especially around the holidays. The biggest struggles that a lot of people have in this industry is multitasking. A lot of people can't do multiple things at once. Time management, getting your timing down. Like putting something together like this, you know, I had to know how long every single thing takes to cook and how long it would take for people to eat, you know, so you get one course out, then you wait a little while and you get another course out, so it's all about timing because if I cook it too soon, food gets cold or food gets hot. Timing is everything. Nate's going to be my wine server. Um, Nate has a, tell them about you did, where you work right down in Milwaukee and what you're I hired. did for many years. I worked um, at some restaurants down in Milwaukee. Um, we did everything from Italian to uh, Irish pubs to um, different, different types of uh, cuisine. Um, I did a lot of work with the festivals like Summerfest, all those Irish fests, things like that. So been in the service industry for quite some time. Uh, the first wine is we're going to do appetizers first round and we're doing a sweet Moscato wine and it's we're not going to give you a full glass kind of a splash in the glass so you get the taste and uh, Nate's going to help me distribute that and then the hors d'oeuvres are on their way. Good thank you. Thank you. You know, 
about, I say we're blessed with many blessings. Many of them come that we don't know about. Uh, I got to meet Chef David here. He actually came looking at having their wedding here. We have an outdoor chapel. Um, and so I think I got a little thumb in there that we can get this arranged. But David is a very talented, passionate person for food. And that's really what it takes in this industry. So with that, I'll let him explain a little bit of appetizers, what you're eating. How's that? So today um, we have uh, a nice traditional cheese along with bacon wrapped chestnuts, which are always nice and popular. I'll, um, then we have a stuffed mushroom with a uh, special Belvedere stuffing <laughs> and um, sauteed chicken livers. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty brave, don't you think? Yeah, it's very good. I've never had chicken liver. <laughs> so, but now this this stuffed mushroom, I mean, that I'm going to get in on one of those, too. And now I have to weigh in on all these? Very good. So, let's try this. Thought that liver would be. I'm not a big fan, but this is delicious. It's not anything I expected. The mushrooms, the unique flavor. The cheese, of course, were Wisconsinites, you know. Cheese heads. <laughs> Lovely. What, what about the wine? The wine, delicious. I usually don't like white wine. This is awesome. This is totally awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we could hear Don't say that word. Don't say that word. Don't say that word. Hey, we got our greens. <laughs> <laughs> what are those? Yeah, we got some craisins from Cranberry. I love raspberries. Mm. Oh, did you say bean sprout too? Yeah, these are bean sprouts, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Fresh garden. <laughs> You're in Wisconsin. <laughs> Potato soup with um, bacon and um, fresh cheese and chives in there. It's made from scratch. Homemade, right here at the Belvedere. Very good. There's potatoes, ham. What else do you see, Bell? Soup. Okay, I see some cheese too. It's really good. And green onions. Green onions. The soup was wonderful. It's soup Italian was sausage. <laughs> with the red wine. Say that oh. again. I like the way it's it sets the setup of it. It looks so professional. <laughs> Just like you see in the magazines and all that stuff, you know, where they what you like about this horse. I love the pork and I like the crispiness of the potatoes. Originally a Duchess potato is piped onto a pan and baked, but I didn't have a piping bag. So uh, we just um, portioned it out and then baked it instead. And then the uh, 
zucchini and squash is uh, locally acquired by Dale. <laughs> and we um, cut that up and um, roasted it in the oven with some more secret Belvedere seasoning. And it was a smoked pork loin along with uh, homemade cranberry relish made by Pat. The bread? Is that the question? Yeah. That oh. recipe, uh, our great-grandmother was a cook in the 1800s in Hurley, Wisconsin, where the money capital of the world, and people from all over the world would come to Hurley to buy wood, lumber. But to entertain those lumber buyers, they would bring in Italian chefs, and they'd serve white linen out in the woods with crystal from it. And one of these recipes our grandmother brought back from an Italian chef. And it stayed in our recipe and our family. We're third or fourth generation swinging the rolls. Yeah. <laughs> what did you like best about it? Uh, the s smoked pork, for sure. I cooked for 20 some years as a chef, is those sham torts. You have to have a knack because mine would never turn out. But uh, you want to tell me what's in it, you know? It's, uh, just a meringue base with whipped cream and lemon filling and another layer of uh, whipped cream and a few raspberries on top and the other one is uh, a custard pie uh, another family recipe handed down generations <laughs> in our family it's called the Stuart, Grandma Stewart's custard pie right mm -hmm. but it's very much like a uh, sham tart or not? not a sham tart Cam Camberley Kind of, yeah, it's got kind of the same ingredients. Yeah. It's a creme, creme brulee. Creme brulee, yeah. And that's her favorite when you go out. And there's always like ten, twelve dollars of dessert, you know. And <laughs> she says, "Yeah, I'll have one of those." <laughs> 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 but we, we're gonna kind of let you take your choice. You guys can mosey up and see which one you prefer. If you want both, try both. But uh, enjoy the dessert. Wonderful. This is wonderful. It's delicious. Anything Pat makes is delicious. Well, if I can get it. Oh, yeah, well, he has to see me eat it. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> Nummy. Thank you. Wow. I like the raspberries. That was a nice touch. The raspberries, I'm saving it for the end. But the custard pie, that reminds me of good old days when I was a young un. boy, oh boy. Ma used to make the delicious custard pie. This is pretty close. <laughs> it's the one with the meringue. And I thought it tasted like a strawberry shortcake, and I thought it was really awesome. Better than anything I've ever tasted before. When I knew ahead of time that Custard was going to be custard pie was going to be dessert. I was very happy because that reminds me of my childhood on the farm, and mother was really good at making the very same, very same thing. Hey, Mike, we cleaned the table off pretty good, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> it's not only food, but you're feeding the souls of the people, and so many people cross your paths that you never dreamed. When you look back, this is my 57th year of doing restaurants. And uh, the flavor from the beginning is still there in the excitement. And I really honored the friendship that we had over the years. <laughs>